do you do you no, do you no, no, no i can look at uh i can look at realities that or facts that completely contradict um that high serum cholesterol is going to equal mi's yeah. and 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 it and it doesn't make sense. Your hypothesis doesn't make sense in that light. It absolutely makes sense. What Are kind you, of things have you done? What thing, kinds of things have you done to control or confound with your evidence? No, but if you're saying, you know, high serum cholesterol equal MI, I can find anecdotal evidence to completely contradict that. Right, but how do you control for confounds with anecdotal no, evidence? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not obviously not controlling for confounds. Then it's not evidence. Because the counterfactual is just the that, counterfactual is just as possible. No, no. But if you're saying, you know, if you're saying mechanistically, high serum cholesterol equal atherosclerosis equal MI, and I have anecdotes to refute you, then you know, then it's like, well, fuck your fucking hypothesis. <laughs> no, you don't have anecdotes to refute. No, me, I right? do. Your anecdotes aren't even no, your anecdotes no, aren't even admissible as evidence, right? Actually, actually, I do. But... No, if you tried to if you tried to write up a case report on these anecdotes, you'd get laughed at by every journalistic institution because you haven't been able to control for any confounds. It's like me walking into like Harvard and saying, you know, I've disproved, you know, quantum field theory because the other day I was walking around and I saw a photon travel faster than the speed of light. They'd look at you and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You can't control for confounds, so it can't be evidence because the things that you've seen are compatible with a hypothesis. So having an extremely high serum cholesterol for an extended period of time and never having atherosclerosis is compatible? Yes, because the lipid hypothesis isn't that simple. And moreover, you haven't controlled for confounds. So, okay, so how about you explain the mechanistic data for the lipid hypothesis? All right, the mechanistic data is that we know... Since, since, since I can't read it right now, right. but you can explain. All right, the mechanistic data is that we know that saturated fatty acid and trans fatty acids cause, ver through various means, it's not even just that it's like singular modal, right? There's actually multiple modes by which atherosclerosis occur occurs. And it also occurs like alongside and coextensively with things like obesity or increased sugar intake, so on and so forth. But the big thing about the lipid hypothesis is that in, in the case where you have saturated fatty acid, there is some amount of damage that is done, and then you have atherosclerotic plaque buildup. But if we wanted to get into the increasingly nitty gritty, Stuff like having a high amount of serum cholesterol can be consistent with the view for various reasons, which is why I asked you for things like Mendelian studies, because there are certain people who are genetically disposed to high cholesterol without atherosclerosis. And that's why I asked you for studies that control for things like statins, because there are people who are on statins and who won't generate <laughs> atherosclerotic damage, but can be on high levels of cholesterol. And I also would need you to control for things like fasted cholesterol, because high postprandial cholesterol can, um, can occur without causing atherosclerotic damage, so on and so forth. Moreover, we have a whole other host of problems that occur before you even start entering atherogenesis, right? So you can have things like arterial uh, growth that occur before you have any atherogenesis. And all those things are things that you didn't control for in your anecdotes. This is why, for example, you can't even um, you can't even diagnose people with atherosclerotic damage on one visit because you actually need someone to be taking multiple tests over a period of time at uh, a consistent level of fasted uh, serum cholesterol, and not even just serum cholesterol, but specific kinds of serum cholesterol. And you also need to see a um, you also need to see other things that actually impose like a damage on the wall, like things like tax scores and whatnot, to actually be able to diagnose atherosclerosis. You can't just take a singular anecdotal reading and determine one way or the other, because it's consistent with the hypothesis. I'm still going to... Uh... <laughs> and what's more, what's more interesting, right, is, it, it's, what's more interesting, right, is your, 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 var your variants, right, these are the kinds of things where we do large studies, right, you know, let's, let's like put this just into statistical terms, 
Like, what's the power of your study? And is it statistically significant? Moreover, what's the generalizability of the study? Who does it apply to? Well, ultimately, and, and, and more and more and more important, more importantly, what hypothesis are we testing against? Well, ultimately, and do we and do we and do we do we have the requisite power and statistical significance to reject the null? Sure. These are important. No, these are important sure, things sure. that you have to answer to me, right? Sure. And, and, sure, and until sure. and until and until and until then, oh until then, okay. yeah, I am going to keep calling okay, you. Okay, yeah, so I'll just keep going forever. Right. I'll just, and until, I'll just, and, and, I'll just mute myself and you just keep going. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And until then, like what you are is agnostic to the lipid hypothesis. I'm not asking you to take the lipid, lipid hypothesis on authority. I'm not asking you to take the lipid hypothesis without understanding it fully. But when you come in here and you say the lipid hypothesis is invalid because of my anecdotes, and I ask you these questions which you can't answer, that should be something that gives you extreme anxiety. And for some reason, you just seem confident in your view. And I just don't understand why you could begin to do that. You done? Yeah, he's done wrecking you. No, oh, thanks. The fact is that I can see people on a carnivore diet have the best holistic health, health outcomes they've ever had, even when they were vegans prior. And what is the and what is the what is the power and what is the power and statistical significance of that? No, do you do you want to shut the fuck up for like three seconds? Right. Just keep talking, talking, talking. I do, keep, I, do, keep, I, do keep, I do keep talking and talking oh, okay. because yeah, what is the because power you're and statistical significance of that yeah, I'm data? Gonna, okay, I'm just going to like put you down to like five then. Sure. What's the power and statistical significance of your data? Oh, that feels good. The point is that, like, it doesn't make sense from the evolutionary perspective um, not to eat a diet high in cholesterol. And yeah, I see all these people on a carnivore diet having the best health outcomes they've ever had. Holistic. Why is it the case that you feel that you can make that claim? And what is the power and statistical significance of that data? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you because you muted me. I just, I just muted you. So, excellent, excellent. This is this has gone very well, hasn't it? You can, you, you know, you can talk to me like a man, or you can just be a fucking faggot, you know. And I can just mute you, and I won't listen to what you have to say. No, it's fine. I'm fine with that. You can kick me. I don't really give a flan. I just want to see some evidence. <laughs>